Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the GFS, the GM, the ECMWF, the GFS Ensembles and the ECMWF Ensembles finishing up with the UK Met Office 5 day precipitation and temperature and over the last few days we have been talking a lot about high pressure and that is still the recurring theme today a lot of high pressure around uh, it's going to be bringing a lot of dry Frosty and cold weather in the south and more muggy, cloudy and milder conditions in the north over the course of this week. It's still going to be uh, quite a common theme next week with high pressure around and there are signals within some of the models we could be seeing some northerly blasts at times as this moves out into the Atlantic. But as I'll explain in this video there is a lot of uncertainty with that because small different, cha small different position changes in the high pressure can give vastly different uh, outcomes for the UK. So could be seeing some northerly blasts at times, but still generally high pressure is the recurring theme. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow us as well, the link's in the description. So run through the GFS uh, firstly. Now this is the 12Z run that has only just come out. Um, it's only gone out to 306 hours at this stage, but there's really no point looking out to that stage because there is a lot of uncertainty even in the 7 to 10 day time frame. So getting out to sort of 12, 14 days is pretty pointless. Now, over the last couple runs, we've been seeing the high pressure reduce its amplification i.e. the jet stream isn't getting as amplified, we're not seeing it go as far north to Greenland, and we're seeing a much more frosty um, outlook. Um, now that's what we're seeing this week, but I'm talking more in terms of the longer term. However, the 12 said runs that I've just had a look through have sort of flipped. Um, both the GFS and the GM are showing a very cold northerly blast in about seven days' time. As I said uh, at the start of the video, they had been showing it a little bit over the last sort of three or four days, but they both lined up with sort of the same time frame. So perhaps this is the models converging on a scenario. But as I'll show you through the various runs, there's no guarantees at this stage, uh, just that high pressure will be involved. So if we do run through the GFS, you can see generally high pressure, of course, in control this week. It's under the centre of the height, in the south, where we're going to be seeing an inversion take place with cold conditions on the surface. Temperatures maybe three to five degrees max. And of course, we see fog and potentially freezing fog. Temperatures are going to be hovering around freezing, as I'll show you with the UK Met Office run at the end of the video. Have a look at the fog and those temperatures. However, further northwards, we're actually going to see sort of reverse what we normally see with milder conditions in the north, colder temperatures in the south, because we have more of a, a westerly influence around this higher pressure. More mixing of the air, that means we don't see the inversion. And temperatures into the high single digits, maybe into 10 degrees to some coastal areas across Scotland. So much milder across Scotland, much colder in uh, across England. We could see sort of three, four, five days of frost coming up in parts of southern England, starting potentially even as early as tonight for some. So yeah, going to be some very chilly seasonal next few days. No snow around by any means, but some fog, some hazardous um, frosty conditions around as well. Now, big interest with this high pressure is what's going to happen next week. Now, we see another sort of reinforcement of high pressure coming out of the Atlantic. And it's what happens to this high pressure. It's going to make all the difference next week. So, as we do pull out um, to roughly uh, this weekend, heading towards day five, you can see high pressure still at the top of the UK. Frosty conditions still in the south. But it's this high pressure in the middle of the Atlantic, ridging towards Greenland. And we're seeing a proper northerly blast in seven days time really bitterly cold air mass you can see minus 10 line getting through the whole of the british isles that would be frigid temperatures in the freezer below freezing in the day and we would be even seeing some frequent snow showers potentially with this especially across northern eastern and western faced coasts also though the temperatures yeah Overnight will plummet. Uh, cold air mass, high pressure toppling over, really quite cold. And the GFS actually goes into a more of a sustained colder pattern. If we just ignore the pressure charts for a second, just look at the upper air temperatures, you can see we never pull in milder air for the sort of foreseeable future. We stay in a colder air mass, even though it's not always minus 5 at 50 HPA, coming off the back of quite cold conditions, especially even in southern England this week, and of course with that northerly blast, we would be going into quite a prolonged cold spell. Now, it's not looking exceptional in terms of pressure charts, as I said. Even the air masses are not looking exceptionally cold. But because we've sort of repeated cold days this week in the south, and if we do see a northerly blast early next week, that bringing even colder air in for a period of time, 
we could be seeing something like seven, ten days of below average or even majorly below average conditions. So very interesting from this latest GFS run. I'm a bit sceptical of it, I must say so. I normally do like to look at these colder charts, but I'm very sceptical of it simply because we hadn't been seeing this. Uh, and I'll run through the 6Z very quickly in a minute and show you the vast differences in one run. Um, but you can see here, yeah, Mid-Atlantic Ridge going in more of a northerly or northeasterly flow. If we do have a look at the 6 end, you can see the big differences. If we go back to when this northerly blast meant to come in, that high pressure, it's slightly further eastwards and not as far northwards. So, as I said, very small differences can make big differences. Um, for, sorry, very small sort of differences can make very large um, changes at, uh, at the surface for the UK. And you can see that bitterly cold air is going into Scandinavia. And we don't see it at all. And as we run along, we stay under the high pressure, seeing a bit of colder air masses at times. But we stay generally pretty mild cold air masses for a time, but nothing exceptional by any means. And right towards the end of the run, we do see a bit of more of a northerly wind, but it's nowhere near as cold as the northerly wind that's being shown on the 12 set. So you can see big differences between the runs. So I don't want to say it's guaranteed we're going to see a cold blast, but there's hints on the latest 12 sets of a cold blast next week. And we follow that up, have a look at the GM run, which very interestingly goes with it. That's why there's a bit more confidence actually I have in this, even though I am still sceptical of it. A bit more confidence than if it was just the GFS by itself. And now if we do run through, you can see very similar high pressure over the top of the UK, and then it moves out to the Atlantic, and we see a proper bitterly cold northerly blast, and it's pretty sustained on this GM run. Um, starting in around sort of seven, eight days' time, minus ten line moves through, and we stay in a bitterly cold north to northeasterly airflow. Really chilly. Um, I mean, there would be some snow around with that. It wouldn't be as snowy as maybe a, an easterly wind, especially for areas in the south. It'd be very snowy in the north, um, but it would just be the temperatures would be so cold, sort of peak at times in the winter. We've still got very low radiation, very short days, and with these bitterly cold air masses, it could be really, really frigid. This is sort of the middle of January, sort of the peak period for the coldest conditions. We have a lot of our cold records in the middle of January. So we yeah, really could be seeing some exceptionally cold conditions if this pattern did come off. As I said, I'm still sceptical of it. I'd have to see this still repeating tomorrow and the day after before it's by any means guaranteed. But yeah, very, very interesting runs this evening. Um, or at 12Z runs, because it really has sort of flipped from being cold, but not massively cold, just generally chilly, um, pretty dry, to suddenly being really quite exceptionally cold in the space of a couple runs. Yeah, really, really interesting from this GM run. And once again, if I do compare it to the midnight run from the GM run, you see all that cold air goes into Scandinavia. So perhaps this is a shift. Um, that's why... Um, it's interesting seeing both the GM and GFS go along with it on the same run, um, because perhaps it is a shift in, in what the models are seeing now. We'll have to wait for the 12Z Eastern Blue F later, um, because that will confirm it, um, if it is a shift or whether these are just two uh, GM and GFS runs showing a slightly different scenario uh, today. Now if we do have a look at the Eastern Blue F, which is the midnight run, uh, as 12Z won't be coming out for another couple of hours, well, we can see what the GFS and GM were going for uh, earlier today and yesterday, which is that high pressure moving out to the Atlantic, seeing that northerly wind going into Scandinavia, um, and just staying under the high pressure. Cold, frosty, chilly conditions, nothing too crazy, um, just generally quite seasonable wintry um, conditions, not in terms of snow, but in terms of a lot of frost, a lot of cold conditions, fog around, um, something quite typical we'd see in the winter, um, unlike what we've had with very mild conditions around New Year. So... Yeah, very, very interesting, these runs this evening. We'll have to really keep a close eye on this. I'm very much going to be anticipating the ECMWF run this evening and the 6Z from the GFS. See whether it does back off or stay with this northerly blast in around seven days' time. Now, if we do have a look at the ECMWF ensembles, which are from uh, the Midnight Run, and they will show you the probabilities of different scenarios. So we'll see what that northerly scenario had in terms of probabilities within the the, GIF, uh, the Eastern Earth ensembles. Now if we do move out to day 5, um, 120 hours, you can see all broadly very similar. High pressure being reinforced out in the Atlantic with this second area of high pressure and this high pressure at the top of the UK that's been dominating our weather, or will be dominating our weather this week, slipping away. Now if we do move out to day 7, which is where the big uncertainty comes in. 
You can see the control and operational run from the Midnight Run, including which includes 17 which includes, of course, the control and operational run. 33.3% of higher pressure, more over the top of the UK, with that cold air going into Scandinavia. However, we see 12 or 23.5%, so it had about a 1 in 4 chance on the Eastern UF uh, midnight run, of that northerly wind properly coming off. You can see that high pressure much further westwards, and really cold air spreading southwards. We have another 12, which is high pressure sitting over the top of the UK, 23.5%, with no real northerly blast at all. I would give that run very low probabilities, um, even though 12 are going for it, I would give it much lower than that, because we are seeing... On all the runs, there is going to be a, a sort of a northerly blast, but it's whether it goes into Scandinavia or more towards Western Europe. That's sort of the uncertainty we're looking at here. And then another nut 10 that follow on similar to what the control and operational run we're going for, just slight different orientation. Now, if we do move out to 240 hours, we can see 15, um, including the control and operational run, 29.4%. Still have high pressure over the top of the UK. Similar scenario of we saw on the operational run, which is high pressure of the UK, chilly, um, frosty conditions. We have another 14 with very cold northerly wind. That's what the GM and GFS were going for on the 12Z, which would be bitterly cold uh, and could be proper wintry weather. Another 13 have something similar to that. Maybe not as uh, big of a high pressure and big of a low pressure, so more of a slack flow. Um, would still be cold, but maybe less snowy with less ice bars, so less convection, uh, less uh, lesser winds as well. So yeah, wouldn't be quite as wintry with that, but would still be really quite frigid. And another nine with just generally high pressure over the top of the UK. A little bit of an outfly jet stream, but nothing too crazy. A westerly flow. Now if we do go out to 300 hours, you can see 18, including the control run, have high pressure over the top of the UK, quite a lot of blocking in the North Atlantic, and again, that pattern would just be frosty, chilly, dry conditions. Another 17, have high pressure back out into the Middle Atlantic, and we'd be pulling in another northerly wind. Doesn't look as potent as we have high pressure to our south, so it's trying to push it away, but still would be quite cold. Another 9, have high pressure over the top of the UK, and to our east, Easterly winds, another seven, have low pressure dominating over Scandinavia, high pressure up towards Greenland, and that would be a blocking pattern. Atlantic trying to break through, but that would be sort of pushing chilly, very cold air into the UK. Similar pattern to what we'll be seeing on the models in the middle of December, um, which of course didn't come off for Christmas. So you can see by sort of 300 hours, a lot more uncertainty. Up until about day 10, most of the models have similar sort of pressure charts, but just slight different orientations and positionings of the high pressure, low pressure, and that makes, as I said at the start of the video, big, big differences. Go right towards the end of the run, you see many different scenarios. 18, high pressure at the top of the UK, chilly conditions, similar to what we ha we're having this week. Another 17, high pressure to the south, would be a flat westy flow, really quite mild, with that actually coming off the Atlantic. Another 9, high pressure just to our south, would be more of a chilly northwesterly flow, but still could be quite mild, with low pressure coming off the Atlantic. And another 7, really cold actually. Um, well, maybe not bitterly cold, but chilly and could be quite snowy as well with high pressure out in the middle Atlantic, sending the jet stream southwards, uh, and that would be pulling quite cold air in towards Europe that could be influencing UK. So you can see big, big differences at the end of the runs, but up until day 10, they are very similar. But as I said, very small shifts, a couple hundred mile shifts in positioning of high pressure, low pressure can vastly change the conditions on the surface from four or five degrees cold and frosty to one degree with heavy snow showers. Um, these are differences we could be looking at next week. So we'll have to keep an eye, of course, on that. Now, if we do have a look at the GFS ensembles, now they haven't fully come out yet, but we can run them out until... Uh, until around when that colder spell is coming off. As I did suspect, we have to be quite sceptical with this northerly wind from the operational run. You can see it has support, but it is one of the colder runs. We can see it has maybe five, six, seven, eight models going with it. So again, similar to what we saw with the Eastern BF ensembles, maybe a quarter to a third going with it. Again, it's run to higher resolution, so it could be picking up on something similar to what the GM operational run is picking up on before the ensembles pick up on it. So we could be seeing that. There definitely is a shift. I must say, there definitely has been a shift from 6 to 6 at Many more going down to that minus 10 area. But we still have many quite mild, just big, big uncertainties. And of course, if you do have a look at those dew points, um, frigid on those runs, really quite cold. Um, and then again, sea level pressure, definitely a drop early next week as low pressure does move in. 
uh, in from the north, but whether it stays further eastwards, bringing just chillier air generally, or whether it does go really cold, that is the big uncertainty, of course. And if we do just have a look at those 850 HP temperature and precipitation again briefly, you can see the operational run, the thicker green line going really cold. If we go back to the 6 head run, just have a look at all those, you can see in around the 18th, there are maybe two or three going bitterly cold, but a lot more are staying on that milder end. When we move to the 12 Z, we do see quite a few more going that minus 5 to minus 10 region. On the 6 Z, we had some really extreme runs, but the majority were between 0 to minus 5, but we're seeing a few more trend between that minus 5 minus 10 maybe it's just one gfs 12 z uh, ensemble run or maybe it is a small shift coming um, towards that colder scenario but very very interesting from these operational runs going both at the same time the gm and the gfs could be just a coincidence and they could just both be um, anomalies it does have some support but at this stage it's really all up in the air we'll have to see what happens next week now, if we do have a look at what's happening over the next five days, we do have not too much uh, stuff going on, but it's going to be quite cold and frosty, as I said. Now, we do have, over the course of the day, we've had some rain push through. Um, it's been quite cloudy uh, and damp and drizzly um, as we do have a weather front moving through. And it's going to stall and sort of fizzle out over the course of this evening. Um, still some heavier pulses potentially within it, but if slowly will move away by tomorrow lunchtime into the early hours of the afternoon. And then high pressure is dominating the rest of the week. A few showers in the north, but generally areas in the south, pretty decent in terms of sunshine. Will be fog and some stubborn cloud here or there. Under that fog, it could be quite miserable and cold. Um, but elsewhere, chilly conditions, but nothing too crazy. And in the north, still some weather fronts and some thick cloud uh, before we head to the weekend. Very similar picture. Now, I do want to have a look at the fog. Um, this gives it sort of a, a rating from 0 to 1 in terms of fog, uh, fog thickness um, or how much percentage of fog we're, uh, fog we're seeing on the surface. Now you can see um, over the course of today we've seen a bit in the west but nothing too crazy, just a bit of low cloud really. Uh, of course seeing a bit of fog around but again nothing too crazy. As we head through Tuesday evening to Wednesday again Nothing too crazy, maybe some more in the east, but it's through Wednesday night into early hours of Thursday we see more dense fog patches develop in central and southern areas. Those could be troublesome, clearing through Thursday, but by Thursday evening to Friday they are really quite stubborn. And through Friday afternoon you can see some don't lift in central southern England. Um, and there's a difference in this fog and more low cloud across Scotland, that's more murky, milder air, whereas this is frigid trapped cloud so it's, even though it shows the same on the, the charts they're slightly different um, and under here it will be really quite cold we see more dense fog for early hours of saturday as well and again if we do have a look at the max temperatures you can see this morning it was chilly in the east um, however of course this afternoon temperatures rising to around six seven degrees so still quite cold but nothing too crazy feeling chilly but yeah nothing too too bad at all and then of course tonight again maybe a frost in the north but nothing too crazy and then by sort of Tuesday afternoon, 7, 8 degrees maybe, but it will be cooling down in the south and picking up in the north. Now you can see through the early hours of Wednesday temperatures, again, dropping really quite low, but more in the south than the north, freezing quite widely across central England. And then through early hours of Wednesday, still really chilly. Wednesday afternoon, maybe 5, 6 degrees, could be colder where we have more persistent fog, low cloud in a few spots. Other areas could be climbing to maybe 7 or 8, but it's going to be getting progressively colder. Thursday night, really chilly, widely freezing or lower than that. And then widely, once again, 5, 6 degrees, maybe 7 degrees in a few areas where sunshine comes out, but feeling quite cold. And by Friday, really bitterly cold overnight, minus 2, 3 degrees, quite widely in rural areas. And by Friday afternoon, some temperatures are not getting above 2 or 3 degrees. Again, locally, could be colder than that. And by early hours of Saturday, once again, another widespread frost. As you can see, there could be some consecutive nights of frost. Many, maybe four or five consecutive frosts in a few areas. So really quite cold. So anyway, interesting conditions coming up over the next few weeks. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.